Good afternoon. I'm doing my master research in the Amazon. When I started my field work, I was advised, don't whistle in the forest because someone who isn't human might answer. I was intrigued. I'd like to explain two things about my project. One is how Amazonians perceive nature, and the other is how this perception describes some aspects of the world that we ignore. That is important because the understanding of this could change our idea about what nature is, as well as our engagement with the, with the environment. So first, in the Amazon, many people hold that the forest is inhabited by different beings, and that these beings, whether human spirits or animals, are essentially persons. Amazonians are, in a word, animist, and they hold that these beings are endowed with agency, personhood, and intentionality. For this reason, people have to keep a certain social distance because some of these beings might be dangerous. That what this advice of no whistling in the forest was very not. What is interesting is that the person who offered this advice was not an indigenous person drawing on centuries of Northwestern tradition, but a mixed blood peasant, a colonist of the rainforest. What is that these peasants come to see the forest as animate in much the same way as indigenous peoples do? That's the question that guides my research. My second point is that these animistic accounts are more than a cultural belief. When peasants hunt in the forest, they actually, they, they actually have to deal with the spirits such as a roller of the forest or a guardian of the game animals. I argue that the belief in non-human agencies arises and is molded by the biophysical properties of the rainforest. I mean, animism emerges when people engage in a particular way with the natural world. To sum up, we favor or block some aspects of reality based on our upbringings and our assumption of the world. The message I hope you live with today is that animals' ability to establish social relations with humans is a reality that emerges when people live in a place such as the Amazon rainforest. Animals with souls are more than a cultural belief. Animals and plants and dough with spirituality are actually an aspect of the world, an aspect that is amplified by the physical properties of the rainforest an aspect that most of us ignore because we don't spend our time gathering or hunting in the forest. And this matters because the understanding of these particularities of the world could change our perception about what nature is. Thank you. Is there any, are there, have people been studying kind of the bi-directionality of it? What I mean is that I know we look at the humans, I mean, we, anthropology is about humans, but we look at the with humans in terms of their relationship with the environment. But are there different relationships between those things that are animistic, some of them obviously invisible and spiritual, but the ones that are animals, I mean, is there a different kind of, has anybody studied the idea that the animals survive in a different way in a culture that is animistic versus one that isn't? Wow. <laughs> Very nice question. Um, actually, I think that the main issue here is that in Amazon, the idea of nature is quite different from our idea. So this separation between humans, plants, animal, environment as something that is a part of sociality doesn't exist there. So um, I think that in the Amazon, as Given this belief that is not just a belief, this, given this belief on, on these animals and dogs with personality, there's, there's, the, the problem is how each species, even the humans, are able to represent the world. So it's, I'm, I'm working with a professor, Eduardo Cohn. So I'm, I'm, we are thinking about made a kind of ecology of the selves. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to try to, to understand, to describe uh, how the world is represented by the, these different beings. I don't know if that's answering your question. It's a start. <laughs> it's a start. Thank you.